So in this video today, we're going to be building upon what we've been doing in the past few videos. Um, I'm actually going to take that Business Works Container Edition application that I built in the last video, and I'm going to deploy that onto ECS. So there's a couple things you need to do before you can actually do that, so I'll walk through that in this video. So the first thing I need to do is open up my studio again. If you see, here's the project I built last time. So what we need to do, um, and this is important because the way that ECS works is that it requires a health check in order for the container um, to pass. So if the, if the health check fails, then you're not going to be able to access it um, via the load balancer. So in, in this health check is essentially passed by sending a 200 response from a request that the, um, that the AWS is making. And this can only be done with either the HTTP palette, so if you build your project with an HTTP activity, or with a get method as a REST activity. So in this case, because our project is just a post, what we need to do is add some a get method that will allow us to have a successful health check. So in order to do this, under contact, you click create REST operations, and then you see the get, hit next, and then you change, or essentially as the response, you set it as a status code only. And so why you can do this? Well, the only thing that AWS is looking for is a 200 response. So essentially, when you have a successful get operation, a 200 response is sent to the load balance of the target group, and it says you can, you can access this. This is working. And essentially, if you just set this as, if you just go to input, and you just set the status line as 200, that means any time that this application is running or runs, this status will be sent as a 200, which will allow the actual application to um, be successful in connecting to that load balancer. Like I said, if you if you had your application already have a get method or some sort of HTTP um, activity into here, you wouldn't have to do this because you could use that same application. You can use that application to actually um, ping the the uh, health check mechanism, and so that it's actually successful. So now that um, we were we added this to this, we're going to create our year file. So if we go to AWS Package Unit Overview, and under Exporting, you'll see Export Application for Deployment. And here you'll be able to choose your your location. So this is a folder, and then a name. So you can leave it the default name, or you can change it. In this case, I'm just going to leave it the default name. Hit Finish, and this will generate my year file in that folder that I've uh, that I have there. Um, that folder was empty, but now if I open up my terminal, you'll see that the R file's there. So now what I need to do is actually pull the base image from um, my AWS repository. So to do that, if I go open up my web browser and I go to EC2 container service, and then if I go to repositories, under my repository, you'll see the 2.3.1, so we saw that before but also there's the view push commands. So if you click on that, this will give you instructions on how you can push, but then also how you can um, you need to log into your um, registry. So in order to do that, you want to copy and paste this, or you want to copy and paste this command into your terminal. And so what is this going to do? It's going to generate a key in order for your um, terminal to have access to your repository. And so this is... Um, Generally, when you first or when you're running Docker on your um, machine, the only repository you can access out of the box is um, Docker IO or yeah, Docker Hub based repository. So if I wanted to pull from there, um, I it, I just have to log into my Docker account and that works. But in the case of AWS, you need to uh, generate a key every 12 hours. So this is done for security concerns, and essentially you just run this command and it'll generate a key. You just copy it and then paste it back into the terminal, and then you'll get login succeeded. So now you have access to that, your registry, and your repository on your AWS account. So, so now what I need to do is I need to actually pull the image that I want to access. So if, let me just close out of this. I'm going to copy this URI, and I'm going to do docker pool paste, and then the actual tag, so it's 2.3.1. Hit enter, and then this will pull my image from my repository. And so, depending on how fast your internet is, um, it may take a few minutes. So, um, once it comes back, we'll continue. Once it finishes, we'll continue on. So, now we see that's completed. Um, download newer tag. Um, if we do Docker images, we'll see that that image now exists here. 
So we actually have a version of 2.3.1 that um, is from our repository. So we're actually going to use this base image to build a new image for our actual project. So, um, so what we need to do is actually create a Docker file. But for that, let me just copy the name of this. So that I have it. Operates with me. Copy. Create a Docker file. So we're going to say uh, from and then the actual that base image. Add and then the actual um, your file name. So AWS test year and then expose. So we're using port eighty eighty. Expose it easy. So write and quit out of it. And now we should see the Docker file there, and it should have the same year file in it. So um, let me just make sure. AWS test. Yeah. So now we're going to use this Docker file to actually build our new image that's going to use the base 2.3.1 image that we downloaded, and then it's going to essentially place that new year file within it so that we, we can actually run this on ECS. So what I'm going to just do is just simple docker build, tag, docker build. So the tag, you want to put it on the same naming as your, um, as your base image or as your actual AW, on your AWS repository. So in this case, it's just the URI, and then you can just put some sort of tag to that. So I'm going to just do um, AWS test. And this will build my image now. So now if I do Docker images, you'll see that I have a new image, AWS test. And if you look at the sizing, notice how it's a little bit bigger than the base image. Well, that's because now it has that error file that I generated in, from Studio um, within that image itself. So now I need to, if I need to actually push this out, it's just running a simple Docker push. So Docker push, and then the name. So just paste again correct tag, AWS test. And so this will push it up into my repository. And um, it's pretty fast just because you already have the, the layers of the base image already. Um, so all it's pretty much doing is just pushing out the extra, however big your ear file is, and just layering on top of it. So it makes it really quick when you're actually pushing this back up. So if I refresh this, you'll see that now I have a image called AWS test. So now I can use this when I'm actually building out my um, task definition for my project. So I'm going to actually build out this task definition. Now if I go to task definitions, I have a couple ones I already created. But you'll do a create new task definition. And you can just give it a name. So I'm going to just do AWS test. Role, you can leave it. It doesn't matter. Bridging, uh, networking, you'll leave it as bridge. And then you add container. So this is where you add the details of your container. Um, so as the name, AWS test, so I'm just going to use image. So this is the image of, or this is the image name of what image you want the actual container to run from. So it's, it's just the URI and then whatever the tag is. So it, in this case, it's AWS test. Memory limit, so I'm just going to put a value. It doesn't really matter. Um, 8080, that's the port we'll be using. So I'm just going to set that as the port mapping. And CPU units, I'm going to set it to 100. And so just for a very basic deployment, that's all you really have to do. Um, I mean, there's a lot, more other thing, a lot more other features that ECS provides and that you can take advantage of when you're deploying your BWC application. Scroll down, there's a lot of things. But for now, I'm just going to just do these standard things where I, don't, I'm, I, I just want to deploy the application. I don't really want to do anything special with it right now. So I just hit Add, Create. And now my task definition will be created. So what, what, what does this mean? So when I actually create or when I actually run a service, which I'll do in my cluster, I'm just going to use this ta task definition information to actually build my container. So there's um, one thing you have to do before we actually create the service. And so if I um, let me open up a new tab. So in this case, go to your um, EC2 management console. And then you want to go under target groups. And so when you go under target groups, why this is important. So if you go to health check, edit. So when you actually first create the, um, 
uh, cluster, you'll see that for this target group, the path is just a backslash. And so what does this mean? So when you're actually trying to access whatever your application is, it's going to try to um, run the health check on whatever the load balance or whatever the URI is, and then the port. So in this case, it would be the URI and then 8080. Well, for REST services, you need to set a path so that it actually knows, okay, how, how, how does, without the path, it won't know where to actually look for your actual application. Because the actual application isn't solely running on 8080, it's running on 8080 with a path attached to it. So in this case, you just set what the path is. So for the actual application I build, it's contact. And you, if you want to look to see what maybe you, what yours might be, is if I go to my process and if you notice the, under the next to the cloud, you see contact. So whatever this name is, that's the name or that's the path that you'll be using for your health check. So I'm just going to hit save. So what's going to happen is that when I actually run my uh, when, I'm, when I'm building my container, when it's actually starting to run. Um, it's going to health check on the URI, the port, and then the path as well. So, um, and if if you don't do this, then you're going to end up getting a failure. So it's just something to keep in mind. Where if you, if you try to build out and you deploy your app and you see that it's the health check isn't being successful, well, um, make sure to actually check to make sure this path is set correctly. So if I go back to EC2 container service under my cluster, I have nothing running right now. But under services, you'll hit create. And I just give it a name. So I'm just going to call it AWS test. I'm going to use just one, one task. The next step. And so you, this is where you'll do your load balancing. So when you're actually creating your actual application or when you want to deploy it, you need to think about what you want to do with this first. So once you actually, um, once you actually start it, you can't change what type of load balancing it uses. So that's why you need to think, is this going to be internal app? Is it going to be external? What type of load balancing do I want to use? So if you were going to use an internal application, if you didn't want access to, uh, to the world, um, you just say none, and then it would only be accessible via the private subnet. If you wanted to make it accessible via anywhere on the internet, you just do application load balancer, which is what I'll be using. Um, and then if you go to container load balance, you'll notice you'll just have one, because we just set one container, so you just say add to ELB. Change the listener port to 8080, target group. And if you scroll down, notice how this health check says backslash contact. So make sure that you actually see that this health check matches what you what it should be. Um, if it isn't, then you need to make sure that you change that and make sure that it matches. Next step. Um, auto scaling. I'm just going to leave it very basic for now, so I'm not going to have any. And then I'm just going to create the service. So... Um, it's going to do a, a few things. Uh, ECS service is going to create the load balancer, and or it's going to create the policy for that. And then it's actually going to create the service itself. And the service itself is made up of the task. Um, so if I go to view service, you'll see that the task there's a task within it, and it says pending. So while it's pending, this essentially means that it's trying to spin up a container with the definition that you've set in your task. So with the ports that you set, so in this case, 8080. And then with the image that you set, and then with, with any other type of uh, memory constraints or any type of variables that you may have set in that task. And so this can take um, a few seconds, a few minutes. In this case, you see running. Um, so now the task is running. So now what we, we want to do is go back to our EC2 management console. And if I go to, um, I believe, targets, you'll, under target groups, you'll see that it says the status is initial. So until this actually says healthy, um, you won't be able to access your application via the load balancer. So it actually has to go through and check to make sure, okay, that this actual container is working properly and it can, it's reachable. So this may take um, a minute or so, and so it's really fast right here. So if I see healthy, um, so now if I actually go to my load balancer, and I'm just going to copy this um, DNS name. So now if I actually hit the load balancer with port 8080 and Swagger, because we're using we're going to be using Swagger UI, um, it'll pop up our Swagger interface. And so this get, like I said, it's just a it's just a simple 200 response. Um, so we didn't really care about it. This was just needed in order to fulfill our health check. But the post, once again, we see our actual application. So it's the exact same thing as what we tested in the previous video. 
so yeah, um, now our actual application is running on ECS. Um, very basic. We we just essentially just added a load balancer on top of it so that we can actually check and actually access that um, via the web. But in future videos, we'll actually do a little bit more with the features that AWS provides and actually uh, strengthening and making your application leverage all those different services available.